Good morning, everyone. Uh, so my name is Timo Elliott. I'm an innovation evangelist for SAP. And uh, before I start, I know you're wondering about this. I apologize. Uh, I broke my shoulder. Uh, it's the result of a skiing holiday that went downhill. Uh, it turns out that you, you, you watch the Olympics, saw all of those tricks. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> All right, so how can we turn information more directly into income than ever before? This is the Tesla autopilot in action. We saw the, a glimpse of this earlier in the keynote. I think it's a fantastic analogy for the future of digital business. It's 100% buzzword compliant. Uh, as each Tesla car drives along the street, it's using sensors, the Internet of Things, to gather vast amounts of big data. And then it's using analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence to turn that data into a superior driving experience. And that's a lot of what digital business is now all about, using the latest technologies to improve your products and services. But Tesla is taking it to a whole new level. Each car shares its data with all of the with headquarters, and then it's shared with all of the other cars on the road. This means that Tesla has essentially turned itself into a massively parallel learning machine. So even if uh, you know the even if your car has never run into an elk or a moose somewhere on a dark night, the more other cars have already experienced that, the more likely the algorithms are to be able to deal with that situation successfully. So the Tesla driving experience is automatically getting better over time and as more people drive their cars. Now, this has been incredibly valuable for Tesla. They recently became the number one uh, U.S. car company in terms of value, despite the fact that General Motors makes 100 times more cars and is infinitely more profitable. Why such a high valuation? Well, partly it's because Tesla makes great cars, but above all, it's because they've mastered data. That data is being used directly to create a superior driving experience, part of an overall system, not just a piece of machinery. And second, that data has value itself. Tesla is being able to extract the value in all of those uh, driving miles and use it to create new business opportunities. So how about you? Hands up if your organization has products or services or internal processes that automatically get better over time as people use them. Sea of hands goes up. Um, not many companies do yet, but that's the big opportunity. That's what's going to be changing over the next few years. Here's just one example. We worked with BASF, the chemicals giant, to introduce machine learning into their finance function, specifically something called invoice matching. When they first employ, uh, deployed SAP a few years ago, uh, only 40% of the invoices that they had issued automatically matched the payments received from the, uh, the customers via the bank accounts. Right? So most of the time, the reference numbers didn't add up, or there's two invoices for one payment, or two payments for one invoice. Over time, they put in place a whole series of rules and managed to get that up to 70%. That 30% of the time, it had to go to a human being who had to go and search through which invoices matched which payments. And it was expensive to maintain all of those rules. Using machine learning, in just two weeks, they managed to get the matching rate up to 94%, and it's still improving, because any time there's an exception, the algorithm can learn from it and do better the next time it finds that same situation. So they now have an internal process that is automatically getting better over time as they use it. Now, invoice matching, not super exciting. But BASF has millions of invoices every year. So that represents a massive saving in terms of time, money, 
and effort. And this is just one small example of hundreds or thousands of these opportunities throughout all of our organizations. Uh, Gartner agrees. They say that this year already, half a billion people will save two hours a day thanks to artificial intelligence. That's an amazing half a million years of improved productivity this year alone through this kind of automation. And this is a McKinsey study that shows that data processing, data collection, analytics is one of these biggest areas where we can benefit from using these technologies to improve the way we work. For the last 40 years, SAP has been helping organizations uh, automate and optimize their business, their complex business processes. So you can imagine, we're investing heavily in artificial intelligence in everything we do. Every business process that you have in your organization, whether it's SAP or not, over the next few years will be optimized and changed taking artificial intelligence for granted. These are the kinds of questions that we answer using our business systems today. Given we have artificial intelligence, it's incredibly powerful, we can start answering these questions more automatically than ever before. And the best place to start with artificial intelligence is your business systems. Artificial intelligence works best where you have high quality data, where you have a small, well-known area of decision, and where you can actually take action automatically on that decision. All of these are part of your business applications. It's without doubt the easiest and best way to get started with artificial intelligence, embedded directly into an existing business process. But it's not only about automation, it's also about new opportunities. In particular, computers will be easier to use than ever before. For example, we've introduced SAP Copilot. It's an enterprise chatbot like uh, Siri, Alexa, or Cortana, but for the enterprise. It's designed to make software easier to use. So I can say things like, um, I'd like to book a week's vacation next week, please. And Copilot will say, did you mean these dates? And I say, yes. Now, in an enterprise context, we have vastly more information about each individual, who they are, what their budget is, what they're trying to do, their job roles, what the KPIs are. So we can take all of that data and actually create a more intelligent chatbot experience than anything we've yet experienced for the uh, consumer world, where we have a lot less context on what people are doing. And there are also new possibilities. Here's a good example. This is SAP Brand Impact. It's uh, designed for the sponsors of sporting events. It uses image recognition to automatically track the appearance of every logo on the screen. Where it is on the screen, how long it's on the screen, how big it is. Now, this, these companies are already trying to do this today, but they literally have low-paid students with stopwatches trying to figure out whether they're getting value for money. We can do it more intelligently through image recognition. And again, just one small example. We've got customers asking us to check whether their um, oil barrels are too rusty to refill. Or we have, we're working with Swarovski, the, ch the crystals company, so that you, we can take a picture of a broken Swarovski crystal and it will automatically find the right reference among their more than uh, 300,000 different products. So again, immense new opportunities through artificial intelligence in business. So there's lots of value to be had, but a lot of organizations feel like they're drowning in the opportunities. Only 3% of companies say they're succeeding with digital transformation today. When we talk to customers, they say, we know that there are great opportunities, but we don't know where to start. We don't know what steps to take, and above all, we don't know how to get to this new, flexible, agile future where, from where we are today with all our existing legacy IT systems. This is obviously where companies like SAP would like to help. We've introduced a new product called SAP Leonardo. It's what we call a digital innovation system. Now, without focusing on our products, the key is that it's not just about these new 
cool technologies, it's about also focusing on the pragmatic steps, on the creativity to actually get value out of these technologies in new ways. It's very different using data in digital business than it is to, for example, upgrade your ERP system. You have to have a completely different and new approach. Why SAP Leonardo? Well, because he was an amazing inventor, technologist, and scientist, but he also understood the importance of creativity and the human experience. And the future of digital business is all about organizations managing to master both. Understanding these new technologies, but above all, working on the people, processes, and culture to actually make sure that this is being used to rethink the business, not just automate what we did in the past. Uh, and we believe we're on the eve of a new digital renaissance, and we think Leonardo would have been delighted to have a product named after him. So this is Leonardo looking delighted. There you go. So before SAP Leonardo, after SAP Leonardo. That's an advanced technology called Photoshop in action. And the only photo you will ever see of Leonardo uh, smiling. Um, so what are the kinds of technologies we're talking about with digital transformation? Well, obviously, the Internet of Things, exposing business processes in new ways. Uh, revealing what always went on, but now we can actually see it thanks to the new information that's being gathered. We're generating vastly more information than ever before. We've got great new platforms like Hadoop and Spark, but increasingly we need to govern that information between these big data systems and our corporate data systems. So there's been a big rise in what are called data hubs. So we have a solution that allows you to govern information between your Hadoop environment and your corporate finance system so that, for example, when it comes to GDPR and other government regulations, you can actually show what you're doing with data, when and how. Uh, machine learning, uh, we've talked about some of the opportunities, automation, new applications and uh, platforms available for experiments. Blockchain is without a doubt the most overhyped technology that's ever existed. At the same time, there are real opportunities. It is going to transform uh, the world over the next 10 years. We're already working in projects like uh, pharmaceutical track and trace, um, food supply chains, um, money transfers between banks, uh, e-government. We've got a great project with uh, Bolzano uh, in northern Italy where they're using, uh, you go in, you get your uh, official government document scanned. It's, uh, that record is then encrypted, added to the blockchain, and then you never have to show that document again to the Italian government. Data intelligence. Now, this is not what it sounds. Uh, hands up, who has heard the term infonomics? It's a term from Gartner. There's a great book guy, Doug Laney. Who's too tired to put their hands up? Who's not going to put their hands up no matter what I say? <laughs> so, infonomics, it's about selling information directly. Now, we actually sell information. We have a service um, on HR data, for example. We can tell you how much a data scientist costs in Stockholm versus London or Boston because we have a lot of data on our cloud platform that allows us to provide that. Now, we're providing that same platform to help you take your existing data assets, not just to run your business date better, but the actual value to aggregate it, augment it, anonymize it, and then package it up to be able to sell it to different customers in different ways. So, for example, last week I was talking to the Canadian Federal uh, Transport Authority. They have lots and lots of data about all of the transportation in Canada. They would like to provide some of that data out to their transportation partners, the railways, the, uh, the companies that do the trucks and the lorries, um, supply chain specialists, but they don't have the expertise to actually create that platform. So we're looking into uh, the possibility of being able to do that for them. Uh, so a big opportunity. Uh, most organizations, uh, Gartner believes that in the next two years, 20% uh, of businesses will have some kind of formalized separate business taking your uh, corporate IT, that cost center, and turning it directly into a profit opportunity. 
and, and of course analytics. Analytics remains the core of everything we do. So that's the technologies, but as I said, it's not about the technology. It's about using that technology in new ways. And if you want to take the first step towards digital business, the first step is actually a big step backwards to look at the big picture. We work a lot with design thinking. It's a methodology designed to help you rethink your customers, rethink your data, rethink who, uh, what you're providing on the market today. Your IT infrastructure, again, it's not just about improving your internal business, it's about how you can improve the customer experience. Looking at that customer journey from start to finish, and at each point of that journey, how can we use the information we've got to improve that situation in some way? So here's some examples of uh, these kinds of methodologies in action. This is uh, Stara. They make things like tractors, and they used our Internet of Things platform to move from selling machinery to selling an integrated digital farming system. So, for example, each tractor has an infrared sensor that can detect exactly the amount of fertilizer that each individual plant needs to thrive. This means that overall it uses a lot less fertilizer, lower costs for the farmers. That's good news for them, it's good news for Stara, but it's also a lot more sustainable, so it's good news for the planet as a whole. It's a good example of the kind of win-win-win opportunity that we can get from using information in new ways. This is Vestas. Uh, they're the number one provider of wind turbines in the world. And we worked with them to find small, high-priority, agile innovation opportunities. Right? This is not, we're not going to upgrade all our systems, but we know we could do something with this technology. Could you help us find those opportunities? So we worked with them. Um, we identified an opportunity together. It was, they have a very manual process for moving their cranes from one location to another. You can see it was all done on whiteboards. So we helped them create a design thinking team with people from IT, from the business, even the crane operators themselves. They went out into the field, did lots of research, came back to our SAP uh, Leonardo design thinking uh, centers. We have them around the region. And uh, then they created prototypes. So it's not about creating a solution and saying we're done. It's about working iteratively with the business people uh, with this work, with this work. Very short, iterative, uh, low-cost cycles. They came up with a prototype. It took just three weeks, and they've now gone into production. It took uh, little as three months. And they're looking to save over a million euros this year through better use of their crane resources. And that's way more than the project cost them in terms of uh, time and effort. So that's a good example of taking these technologies and applying them in new ways. Uh, here's another, another nice example. This is uh, Northern Gas Networks in the UK. They're a gas supplier. Now, they started off thinking, we know we need better access to our information, so we're going to invest in a visual data discovery tool, self-service. That'll solve everything. But we managed to persuade them to do a design thinking workshop, and they realized they had a much bigger data problem, a much bigger data opportunity. And ultimately, they rethought their entire culture and process around data from the highest level of the organization down to the operations. Now, now here they're actually using the SAP Digital Boardroom, so it's a cloud-based solution that allows you literally to get all of the information you need at your fingertips in real time. And it really has transformed the way they do business. And we believe that the future is these kinds of environment, cloud-based because you can iterate faster. At the same time, you're not going to get rid of your on-premise system. So the future of analytics and BI has to be hybrid. You want to be able to access all of that power from the cloud, especially artificial intelligence, but be able to access your on-premise data without it ever leaving your company firewall. So that's what we offer with our analytics solution. We believe that everybody else is going to be doing the same thing. Um, and BI has to be smart. We can get rid of a lot of the traditional barriers to business intelligence using machine learning to help prepare data, letting the algorithms tell us how the data comes together rather than us having to join it explicitly. 
Every time we look at a report or a dashboard, we're looking for anomalies. We're looking for outliers. Again, the, the algorithms can do a lot of that heavy work for us. Natural language, we want to be able to ask questions using our everyday language rather than having to create actual queries. And we can operationalize data use in new ways. What's the, if you ever bought anything on Amazon? Yes, most people have. What's the next screen that comes up? You've just purchased something, what does it say? It says, people like you, also, people who bought this product also liked this. Well, we can start doing that with analytics helping people understand what data is available. People who looked at these reports also found these other analytics and dashboards uh, relevant and useful. So here's just a, a glimpse of that in action. This is the automatic discovery. I just give it some data. It tells me what's interesting. Here, are, here is all of the, uh, the correlations. Here's what uh, this uh, variable depends upon. Here's what we found that is different that might be worth your attention. Uh, is smart grouping. The algorithm's working out how to group data in the most intelligent ways. And uh, here's the, the beta version of our, what we're calling uh, search to insight, where we can say, you know, show me net revenue by product and region. It understands all of the semantics, the metadata. That's already in the system. Uh, natural language processing is now very powerful. So it automatically gives us the data we're asking for in the form of a chart. Could be showing net revenue, it could be budget versus actuals. Any question that we use to uh, ask of our analytics system, we can now do easily and simply through these kinds of chat interfaces. Again, thanks to the power of machine learning. So finally, it's not just about better decisions, not just about better business, it's about changing the world. Analytics will have an even better, bigger impact on our society in the next 20 years than the internet did on the last 20. This is literally a beating digital heart created by researchers in the UK, um, and it did a 30% better than the doctors in predicting heart patient outcomes. So this is literally preventative medicine, predictive uh, maintenance for people. So literally saving lives uh, thanks to these new technologies. So, with that, uh, thank you very much for your time. You can use data to optimize your business, but also to transform your business. And we'd love to talk to you more on the SAP stand. Thank you very much.